This is a short video on how to make a pie chart in SPSS. So say I'm really interested in um, people's political identification. So this is the general social survey from 2006. And so I want to look at this variable party ID and I want to make a little basic pie chart out of it. So this is a great variable to do this. Um, and because there's sort of a finite number of categories, there's about six different things that people answered, maybe seven. That's a lot for a pie chart, but I can make it work. I wouldn't want to do a pie chart on, say, um, this interval ratio variable up here without recoding it. So highest year of school completed. It would make a pie chart with so many categories, it would be too challenging to read. So if I go into graphs up here, um, one of the options is chart builder. And this allows you to make a lot of different kinds of graphs and charts. If you notice, it has this little um, warning that your measurement level should be set properly for each variable in your chart. And your value label should be defined for each category. So this just means that your level of measurement over here should be set appropriately. Sometimes when Chart Builder won't let us make a chart or graph, for example, a histogram, which should be interval ratio or scale, it's because of how the measurement is set over here. Sometimes if you're, if you're puzzled or frustrated by this, it's good to go back and um, check on your variable properties. So this opens this little um, dialog box here. And the first thing we need to do is pick what kind of graph we want to make. Right, so there's bar charts, there's line graphs, there's area, pie and pull, you can get to scatter, plots, histograms. We're mainly going to focus on pie and umbar graphs. Right, so I'm going to double click on that, or you can drag it into this area over here. This is the element properties box. If for some reason it closes, you can open it up again right there. I need to tell um, SPSS what variable I want to use. I'm going to pick it over here. I'm going to drag it there that I want all of the slices to be sliced by how people answered this question. I also want to, um, I can make some changes in terms of how how it's sliced. I can do it by count or I can do it by percentage. And usually we want percentage. So I can change that over here in the element properties box. With the element properties box, you always have to click apply. Otherwise, it won't make the changes that you suggest. So up here in this box, and this is true for all of the different graphs, there's the properties of different parts of this pie chart. So pie charts are pretty simple. So in this, we can um, change the variable, we can change the percentage, we can change percentage out of what, in this case, out of the grand total. In angle or axis, we can change how it's positioned. So whether or not that first element starts up here at 12 o'clock, or whether it starts at 2 o'clock, so I can change how the pie chart looks. What we see here is not actually how our graph is going to turn out. Right, so don't worry about um, that yet. We can change whether it goes clockwise or counterclockwise, so this is just aesthetics. We also can change um, how it's organized, right? So do I want it to be ascending or descending? Do I want to sort it by the value, by the label, or some sort of custom sort? Right, so if I wanted to do a custom sort on these, I could kind of move them around. I wouldn't necessarily want to do that. This is an ordinal variable. We should keep things um, the way they are. But you can do things like, um, if I want to really make this chart just about whether people are Republican, Independent, or Democrat, I could take out people who are um, members of another party. Or if I've forgotten to exclude my missing variables, I could do that here. Right, So I can I kind of customize what this looks like. I can change the legend label. This is the little legend that will be next to the pie chart. It can be like, oh, okay, I want to make this political party, sort of political party affiliation. I also can tell it that I only want it to show um, categories that are present in the data. So maybe that you ask some questions and um, say you ask people about race and nobody said they're Asian American. Well, that category Asian American will show up in the legend. Um, unless you tell SPSS not to include it. So if nobody answered that question, um, it'll be excluded from the, the legend if you tell SPSS you want to show only categories that are present in this data. So there's a lot you can do here. I'm going to close this because I've made all the changes I want to make to change. You can make titles and footnotes. 
right? So you'd be like, oh, I want to make a title for this. Um, I'm going to be, it's going to be figure 2.3. Um, it's kind of less awkward making the title in, um, in the element properties viewer. We can also do it in the, um, in our output as well. Right, so we can make footnotes. We can say, oh, I want uh, to have a footnote of um, general social survey data 2006. I can kind of customize how I want this to look. And then I'm going to click OK. I wonder if this will let me. It's like at the very bottom, and my screen is kind of being a pain. So I'm going to click OK, and it's going to throw it into my output. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. It has a title, it has a little legend over here, it has all of these colors that are very distinct and different. And even now, there's some things I can change about it. So I can't change the general structure. I can't be like, OK, I want to get rid of some of these variables. I want to um, you know, change the way it's structured here. I have to go back into the graph um, editor to do that. But I can do some editing here. So I just double clicked on the chart and it opens chart editor. And this is where you do some of the cosmetic changes. So say I want to make this legend um, bigger. And in general, and this can be very frustrating too, I think chart editor is far more frustrating than um, chart builder. As you can go through and be like, okay, I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to change the font. So if you just sort of double click on all of them, uh, see this is where it gets frustrating, right? And say, like, I want this font to be much bigger. I want it to be 14. And I want it to be um, bold. And I want it to be a different color, right? So you can apply those changes. Okay, maybe that's not what I wanted. <laughs> maybe I don't want it to be uh, quite so fancy. Right? And you can go through and say, this font is just far too small. So I want to make it bigger so it'll be easier for people to read. These are all really important things. You also can go in and you can change the actual text, right? So if you um, if you're like, oh, this is not strong Republican, I want to say not strong Republican, you can go through and you can change that as well, right? So this is very malleable. You also, and students really love this, is you can change the colors, right? So you can change each individual color. You can say, oh, I want to try this out. Um, that changed the border, right? So you want to change the fill of a certain color. So you have to double click on it and say, like, okay, I want to change the fill. I want to change it to this color. I see what that looks like. You can play around with that um, as well. And there's all kinds of other things, like you can change how these are sorted, right? You can exclude some things if you ended up with a missing value here. You can change the depth and the angle, so you can give it a little bit of a shadow, you can make it a little 3D, you can change some of the position slices still. You can um, change whether it's based on count or percentage a little bit. There's a lot you can do here, and the size and the aspect ratio of the chart. So you can go pretty wild. I warn you that you really want to make sure that you're happy with the graph and its structure as is before you get in and start tailoring it. Right, and doing things like changing the font of the title, like getting kind of nitpicky with it. Because these are changes you can do once you have all of the output done. You have all of your graphs done, and you're going to go through, you're going to make them all look really pretty and make them all look really aesthetically pleasing and similar. So that is, and so if I close this, and I close this, it'll apply these changes to my graph in um, my output.